right, today we are actually going to get involved in factoring quadratics. We've been working on factors and greatest common factors and, and working on factoring out a common factor out of polynomials. We're going to do a process called factoring a quadratic. Now when we look at factoring quadratics, we're going to try to use the information that we did yesterday in our activity. Um, when I have something that is x squared minus 16, I'm looking for two groups of numbers as a binomial that I can multiply together to get this. And if I order to do so, I know my first two terms have to be x's. Okay, now my middle two terms have to multiply together to get what? A negative 16. So what are they probably going to be? A negative 4 and a positive 4. Now we chose those because there's nothing in between, so they would end up canceling each other out when you add them together. So watch this. Let's work FOIL and see if we get this for our quadratic. We get x squared plus 4x minus 4x minus 16. Okay, those cancel out and you get x squared minus 16. So is this the factor? Or is it factored, x squared minus 16? It is. OK, so this is the process we call factoring. Now remember, in the last chapter, we started with two binomials. And we used FOIL to distribute our terms and multiply to get this polynomial. And we call that one a quadratic. OK, now we're just kind of undoing that. We're going in an opposite direction. Now you may ask, why are we doing this? We're going to do this because this helps us solve a quadratic. The other day we did our activity where we knew what a quadratic looks like. What does it look like? A u. Okay, so we have our, our axis here. Usually a quadratic is a u. And we said that the solution to that quadratic is where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, most cases it's going to cross in two places, but not always. And we can find out where those two places are by setting up two a factored quadratic equal to 0. Because if either one of those is 0, then this can be 0, correct? So we can say that x minus 4 is equal to 0, or x plus 4 is equal to 0. If I solve, I get x is equal to 4, or x is equal to negative 4. And those are your x-intercepts. So it's 4, 0, or negative 4, 0. So that's kind of like your solution. But today, all we're going to do is work on this part. We're not going to work on actually finding the solutions. I'm just trying to give you the overall picture as to why we're doing this. So let's try to think of how we could factor x squared minus 36. We know because it's a quadratic, I can multiply two binomials. What do my first terms have to be? x, very good. And what do these have to be? OK, a negative 6 and a positive 6. You have already realized that there's a shortcut. Because there's no middle term when it cancels out, one of these has to be a positive and a negative, and they're both the same number. Now, you notice that these are perfect squares. So we say that when I find the difference of two perfect squares, this is kind of a shortcut. OK, so this is called factoring. I have just factored x squared minus 36. OK, let's try one now with three terms. We're going to factor x squared minus 10x plus 25. And here's where our game the other day helped us out a little bit. Because our x squared term is first, we know that the first term in each factor is going to be an x term. But now I must look for two numbers that multiply together to get 25, add together to get a negative 10, multiply together to get 25, but add together to get a negative 10. A negative 5 and negative 5. OK, let's try it. I have to do x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25. Is it going to work? Yes, it will. OK, so I just do this to check. This is my checking step. Because you really can't decide that those are the ones you're going to end up with unless you actually check it. Now, do you have to write it all out? Well, for now, we're going to. But you'll get to the point eventually where you won't have to write all out. I'll tell you, because if, oftentimes you have make a mistake in this area. 
Okay, so you just factored x squared minus 10x plus 25. All right, let's try this one. Now, what do you notice about these two? This is a perfect, perfect square. It's the difference of two perfect squares. So when I factor it, the middle ends up canceling out. So one has to be a negative, one has to be a positive. Five is the answer. X minus five times the quantity X plus five. Okay, now that's just kind of an intro to the first steps of factoring.